Now, if you've been watching my channel, you would have already seen a video on how to get reverb on your vocals. But today I want to show you how to use a delay calculator to make sure that those tails end perfectly every time. Put the intro in here, go here, put it in. <laughs> Hey, what's up everybody? It's Fabio here from Noise and we are back. Now, I actually did film this video a few weeks ago and then I realized I got all the millisecond information wrong. I was obviously filming a batch load of videos, wasn't thinking straight and it just, you know, something happened, something happened. I get things wrong, I'm human, I'm not perfect. But before we crack on, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll bring you these videos twice a week. You probably noticed the Ableton push is centered on my desk now. Trying to get more into it. Still not happy with the mixing workflow of Ableton, but the creative workflow is amazing. So I will be doing some videos on the push soon. Give me some time, give me some time. I want to get it right for you. I'm not just going to do it for the sake of it. And behind me over here is the SSL Fusion, which I know a lot of you keep asking me to do a video on. I'm still getting to grips with it. So I just want to make sure that I really understand what's going on before presenting it to you. And uh, we'll put a bunch of stuff through it. You can see how great it makes everything sound. And whether you want to be eating rice and bread for the next few months, just so you can buy one, just like I did. Yeah, that hurt the bank. That one did. So you want perfect reverb on your vocals. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? I want perfect reverb on my vocals. Let me show you how to use the delay calculator properly so we can get those tails sounding sweet. First of all, I want to say a big thank you to AO for letting me use his track and his amazing vocals for this video. I'm going to play you the vocal with the track and then I'll play it to you soloed. Never should have let you in. Never should have been so weak. What a big fool I was. Everybody knew I was. You never did deserve it. You weren't even worth it. Should've never given you my heart. Never given you my time. Please note that there is obviously no reverb. I also took the echo off. Now I'm gonna solo the vocal so you can listen to it just by itself. There is some processing on there, some EQs, some compression and so on. Reverb is one of those things that I would add after controlling all of that vocal. But I've got some other videos on EQing, compressing, multiband compressing vocals, so check them out. I'll leave a link above. Here it is soloed. Never should have let you in. Never should have been so weak. What a big fool I was. Everybody knew I was. You never did deserve it. You weren't even worth it. Should have never given you my heart. Never giving you my time. Really, really nice tones to his vocal, but it needs a bit of atmosphere and ambiance. So what we're gonna do is actually gonna head to Google. Before we do that, take note of the BPM of your track. This is 99 beats per minute. And I'm gonna flick across to this screen here and go to the delay calculator. This delay calculator is done by a guy called Nick Fever. I do believe there are a few apps as well that you can get on your phone, but this is the one that I like to use the most. And if we scroll down, we can actually just punch in our BPM here. So 99, calculate reverb and delay times. Give it a second. And if we scroll down, it should show us 128, the 64th, a 32nd, and so on. Now, what we want to set first is the reverb tail. Now I'm going to try a bar long reverb tail first and then we can always just halve it and halve it and halve it to see if we want to get shorter and shorter and shorter. So 2424 milliseconds which is 2.42 seconds essentially. So let's go back and in here we're going to do 2.24 seconds. Let's pull down that pre-delay for now and I'm just going to turn that on. Let's see how that sounds. Never should have let you in. Never should have been so weak. What a big fool I was. Everybody knew I was. You never did deserve it. You weren't even worth it. Should have never given you my heart. Never given you my time. Really nice, let's try half the length. So let's just go for it. So 1.12. Doesn't have to be super precise. Just get it as close as you can. Never should have let you in. Never should have been so weak. 
What a big fool I was. Everybody knew I was. You never did deserve it. You weren't even worth it. Should have never given you my heart. Never giving you my time. Now, I think for this style of track, it's going to be better if we actually do a longer reverb. So we'll go back to 2.24. Let me just check that's what it was. 2.42, sorry. 2.42. A little bit jet lagged at the moment, using a lot of coffee to stay awake, and uh, no one needs your life story, Fabio. Get on with the tutorial. Shut up, mate. <laughs> Now that we have the right reverb tail length, what we actually want to introduce is some pre-delay as well. Now pre-delay is essentially how long it takes for the reverb to kick in. You'll probably notice when you're in a cathedral, a church, like a really big space like a mountain valley, anything like that, there's a little bit of delay before you hear the reverb. That's why a lot of people call reverb echo. Before you know what reverb is, you're like, oh, I love the echo in this space. Really, it's just reverb. And the pre-delay is essentially how long it takes for the sound to bounce back to you. So there is a little bit of a delay when you're shouting in a really, really big room for the sound to reach that back wall or that back material, whatever that may be, and then fire back to your ears. So we can also work out our pre-delay. I am going to try a 16th um, and a 32nd. So we'll flick between the two. That's usually what I like to go for for pre-delay. Again, it depends on the vocal, depends on the track and how things are being sung, spoken or rapped. So let's try 151 milliseconds, which is quite slow for a pre-delay. It might be too slow, but let's see if it works for this. Never should have let you in. Never should have been so weak. What a big fool I was. Everybody knew I was. There's almost a bit too much of a slap, so let's make it shorter. Let's go half of that, so that's roughly 75, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter too much. You don't have to get it to the point millisecond. Never should have let you in. Never should have been so weak. What a big fool I was. Everybody knew I was. That sounds a little bit more cohesive and glued to the vocal. Now, Pre-delay is really important because it just allows a little bit of space between the first hit, the first signal, and the reverb, which creates a little bit more room for each element in the mix. If you don't have pre-delay, sometimes the two sounds can blend together a bit too much. This can also be great if that's what you're going for, if you're going for a more kind of mushed, smooth, intertwining effect. But I like how the vocal's sitting in the mix. I do want the reverb, I just want it to come in a little bit later so it doesn't interfere too much. So what I really like about this delay calculator is you can actually do this. If you go to where it says click me here, it will put in your reverb time, and then we decided that we were also gonna put some pre-delay, and it will then calculate the remaining reverb time, so it will take it off, it will do the calculation for you, shortening the tail a little bit, because it's taking into consideration how many milliseconds there are with the pre-delay as well. Now, we decided to go for 75, so we'll just put this up to 70, okay, it won't give us 75, we'll go to 76, and the remaining reverb time is actually now 2.34 seconds. So we can go back here, 2.34, and punch that in. Now it's just gonna take a little bit off the end, making sure that it does actually finish at the end of the bar and has included that pre-delay. Is it gonna make a huge difference? Probably not. Is that a little bit too nerdy? Probably yes, but if you wanna be super technical, that's the way to do it. Never should have let you in. Never should have been so weak. What a big fool I was. Everybody knew I was. Sounds really good. Now, let's hear it in context. Without and then with the reverb. Never should have let you in. Never should have been so weak. What a big fool I was. Everybody knew I was. You never did deserve it. You weren't even worth it. Should have never given you my heart. Never giving you my time Never should have let you in Never should have been so weak What a big fool I was Everybody knew I was You never did deserve it You weren't even worth it Should have never given you my heart 
never giving you my time. Love the way that the reverb is helping the vocal sit in the space, but also adds a little bit of sustain to the end of it. So it's kind of filling in the gaps where AO is not singing. Of course, you can then go ahead, compress, EQ the reverb, do whatever it is that you want. But we're just here to talk about the delay calculator. So go check that out. I'll leave a link in the description below to the delay calculator that I used for this tutorial. Ayo, thanks again so much for letting us use your track. This will be out really soon. If you don't follow me on Instagram, go ahead and click on the link in the description below and I will let you know, keep you updated when this song is coming out, was mixed and mastered here. Such an honor to work with such a talented artist. It's been a pleasure as always, guys. A real pleasure. Um, in fact, uh, doing this tutorial has, I've just, I'm over the jet lag. I'm done. It's all good. It's all good. I hope that you enjoy using this delay calculator as much as I do. Very, very useful tool. It's gonna get those reverbs sounding tight. Before you go, just remember to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll get back to you very soon with another video. It's a big love from Noise. Peace.